Hey, welcome back. So of course, all the buzz is around generative AI and large language models, but it is not the solution to every single problem. Well, at least not yet. So where we were in the last video is we actually made a time service uh, using Bun and WebSockets. And of course, we ran into a problem. And I'm going to show you what that problem is and how we can solve that, which will then in the future allow us to train some large language models and create these agent networks. So just as a quick recap, we created a WebSocket server in Bun, which acts as a time service. So when you connect to that service with your WebSocket client, it will give you a basic welcome message and tell you what sort of commands you can perform. So you can ask what's the time. And then when you ask that question, it will give you the answer. And this is the code here. And if you want to check out that video, you can of course do that. But what we will do is we'll quickly run that Bun WebSocket service. So you see it's listening on localhost 3000. And then I will connect up to that in Postman. And you see here, if I click on the connect button, it says, welcome to the time server, ask what's the time and I shall answer. So I've already put in my message column here, what's the time? And if I hit send here, it comes back and it says the time is 7.18.22. Yep, so it's giving me an accurate time because in my code here, I've got this sort of check here that says what's the time and then it will go calculate the time and then we send back the time is whatever the current time is. Now, the problem with that, as you can see straight away, is if I send anything other than what's the time, so if I misspell this in any way, such as what's the time, then you are going to see when I click on the send button, it says I can only tell you the time if you ask nicely. And in fact, there any other variation. So even if I uh, put an S on at the end there, I'm going to get the same error. If I word it in a different way, tell me the time, then it's going to come back and say, I can only tell you the time if you ask nicely. So it doesn't handle those variations. And if we think back to the sort of 1980s and expert systems, this was exactly the reason expert systems failed is because, you know, they were very brittle in nature because you had to ask the exact questions that you wanted. And if you didn't ask it in that way, then it failed. We are exactly or we're in that scenario here. Now, the natural thing that you could do is lean into generative AI, such as uh, the Mistral 7B model or Llama models or the GPT models. There's a whole sort of ton of models there, but that's a really expensive solution to something that is ultimately a classification problem. So we can do that probably cheaper. But before we do that, I'm going to show you how this would work with Mistral 7B running locally on my machine. And then you're going to see why that's a problem. So I'm going to bring up a piece of code that we created in a previous video, which allowed you to run Mistral 7B, which is a very small large language model on your local machine on Node.j. So this code here actually allows you to load Mistral 7B using Node.js on your local machine. It specifically is using the Node Llama CPP uh, package. So, and as you can see, I'm loading Mistral 7B. Now in that video, um, I asked a whole bunch of questions that I did some timing, but you see I've got a sort of default prompt who would win an armrest on Pikachu or Mr. Tickle. So what we will do is we will run that question first of all, just make sure it all works okay. And then if it works fine, then we'll change it to what is the time. And as soon as you, we run this, you're gonna see exactly what the problem is there. So let's just uh, run mpxtsx.index.ts. And of course you can download that uh, code from my GitHub. And again, if you wanna watch the video, feel free to check that out. So as you can see there, it comes back with who would win an arm wrestling Pikachu or Mr. Tickle and then Mistral 7B is going to come back from its kind of knowledge base and figure out who's going to win in such a fight. There we go it came back and it said it's difficult to say who would win blah 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 you know um, but essentially Mr. Tickle's got his long arms and of course uh, Pikachu is probably going to cheat and use his electric powers. I think that's unfair in an arm wrestling match if Pikachu is going to start shocking Mr. Tickle. But there you go. You can see that works. Now, what I really want you to notice is the execution time. It basically took about 18 seconds to run that test. And that's not going to be much different if we uh, change this. So we could say something like, what is the time? And then if I run this here, again, it's a little bit faster. It says the current time is 10.30 and execution time is about three and a half seconds. So again, it answers faster because there's less tokens that it needs to output, but it's still pretty slow. And of course that time there is not accurate. It's just taking that from its knowledge base. What we would actually need it to do is classify the time. So if I wanted to use a large language model to classify 
queries about the time, then I would need to construct a prompt something like classify the following query as what's the time or not a query about the time and then put my question in which is tell me the time. So if I now run that, you're gonna see it's gonna come back and it's gonna come back and say that tell me the time is a query about what's the time. And of course, if I change this to something like uh, what's my name and then save that here, we'll just clear it and run it again, it's gonna come back and say this query is about something else. And there you go, so not a query about the time. So that works pretty well. I can, of course, use a large language model to do that, but then I need to get really picky, give lots of examples, handle hallucinations, and ultimately it's still gonna take about two seconds to perform this because even large language models, they need a huge amount of processing to be able to run that. So I can use an LLM to classify my queries. I could take that and I could integrate that into my time server to basically understand all the different variations of me asking the time, but my goodness, that is an expensive solution and probably fragile solution to do that. So actually, this is a perfect case where I could lean into something like NLPJS, uh, which is a natural language processing library uh, for Node.js, and that is gonna be able to do a better job at classifying. Okay, maybe not a better job, but it's certainly gonna do a faster job, and I'm not gonna to have to worry about hallucinations. And of course, in my world where I wanna train agent networks, etc., so I'll have a really sort of fixed corpus of questions that I can ask, then uh, this is probably a better fit in this case.